Hey, hey, hey. We got a good topic today, secondary conditions. I don't know about you, Coach Luna, but before I came here, I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just you don't know what you don't know. I got uh, so much knowledge realizing, and most of my uh, percentages now come from secondaries. So a lot of vets that think that they can't uh, file for a claim anymore, that they might be maxed out somewhere, could actually qualify for a good secondary. I'm uh, Coach John Luna. I uh, was in the Air Force, four active, six reserve. Uh, got three deployments under my belt. I'm currently at uh, 90%, still working on a couple of claims to hopefully um, get me across that finish line. I've been a coach here with uh, VACI for going on three years now. I'm Eddie, I'm Coach Eddie Cheveria. Uh I've been here at VACI for about a year and a half. A uh, little bit, a little bit more than that. Did uh, four years active um, as an MP. Um, had a deployment under my belt, then went National Guard. Uh, became a, an aviator. Uh, did a couple aircraft. Uh, and uh, yeah, a lot of what the claims process uh, is about uh, requires a lot of knowledge that that we already have. So if if you are um, unfamiliar with the VA claims process, that's where we help. We let you know. Uh, what resources you need, where to look for them, and we help you uh, combine that. So we, we don't write up anything for any veterans. We don't tell you what to say. We uh, help you talk about your uh, uncomfortable truths. If you've been dealing with something for mental health for a while and you um, have not found anybody to really open up and confide with, but you know it's been detrimental to your quality of life, we can help out. We are uh, disabled veterans just like you. So uh, outside of this, we have very real lives where our disabilities uh, do affect us in negative ways. And we are empowered to help other veterans who don't know about their benefits uh, figure out their own path to make sure that they get recognized. With that, I wanted to jump into the topic that we have today mm -hmm. um, because you've hit a lot of points uh, that a lot of veterans may not um realize they they may qualify for certain things uh so uh, secondary conditions i didn't know what those were when before i got here i thought you know i was in the military i hurt my back that was it right i can only claim my back uh for whatever the reason was it, it you know it was injured with uh didn't know that uh my back is also connected to a lot of other things that in time can definitely um impact uh the the health of it right so for instance like the old uh the hip bone connected to the knee bone knee bone connected, mm -hmm. you know <laughs> everything connects right if one thing goes then then it starts to kind of it everything know, follows mm -hmm. everything follows and yes that would be uh an example for instance of a secondary condition your let's say your lower lumbar uh causing issues with your legs uh which is usually called uh radiculopathy right yeah, like when, when I get a veteran and I see that they have one knee that's service connected and typically, you know, when you leave active duty, you might be leaving in like your 20s, early 30s. It might not be that big a deal, but veterans that come to me after they've been out for a few decades, well, that knee has now manifested into uh, severe back pains and has affected their uh, their other knee now as a result of the the compensation their body has uh, had to do because of the um, the degraded knee over the course of time. So things get worse as you get older. Um, for instance, like tinnitus. Tinnitus, oh my God, tinnitus is a consistent condition. And it really depends on the, the severity that it, it uh, acts up that day. I sleep with two fans plus a TV to drown it out sometimes. And with veterans, as they get older, that tinnitus will also increase in severity and really, really wreak havoc on your quality of sleep, which just snowballs uh, during your day when you feel absolutely fatigued and grumpy. So uh, as a result of that, like somebody, uh, a veteran could just have tinnitus service connected. But what does that tinnitus look like after you've been out for a few years? How have you noticed the correlation between that and your anxiety and your insomnia because of that degree of um a frequency that's diminishing your your sleep so there's a number of conditions there if you have a mental health condition 
um, and you suffer with uh, gut issues, like PTSD is known to cause heartburn, which, you know, I deal with pretty often. I have to get Tums, <laughs> especially on rough days. And it's all a result of anxiety. Like I remember I used to finish a big old thing of those um, in Iraq when we were getting mortared on a daily basis. So like that anxiety uh, can upset your stomach and your guts in a way that um, that wasn't maybe originally recognized on active duty. But if you have a condition that's service connected now, for instance, PTSD, and you're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome or heartburn, that could be taken in consideration as a secondary condition. I wanted to bring up another one uh more recent uh due to the presumptives that are um uh, now uh being approved for the burn pit uh, any type of respiratory conditions right that uh are coming up as far as sinusitis rhinitis asthma um if those things are are something that you can be service connected for uh a lot of veterans that have sleep apnea can then um, look into possibly getting that service connected secondarily uh, and, and not just that, right. There's other things that, uh, you can secondarily connect, uh, um, for that. Uh, it's like a chessboard. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can't make a move too soon. Like for instance, veterans that have sleep apnea, sinusitis, rhinitis, PTSD, out of those claims, you don't want to put sleep apnea first. You don't have that, uh, those set of moves that make uh, sleep apnea likely. You want to make sure that you do contact a coach so they can put those pieces together to make sure that it, that your condition will make sense in the claims world to get service connected. So there's right. such a thing as filing a claim too soon. If you file a claim too soon without the foundation to back it up, it's going to fall. When I talk to my vets and they, they have an idea that, you know, hey, I have this, I have this. We're going to have to wait. Um, this is why, <laughs> right? You're going to have to build. Uh, that strategy to get uh, first this, this, and this, and then we can build off of that once you get connected. And and here's why. And and a lot of vets uh, that I work with don't realize that. And um, you know, if they wouldn't have waited, it would have been denied or you know, delayed. Uh, so we just try to make sure that we have the right strategy um, in intact uh, to to put a successful claim in. No, a uh, very common question we get is um how soon until i can see results or how how fast until we can actually submit a claim well that really really is a case-by-case -case basis if you guys have not been to the doctor since leaving active duty you need it as brian says get your butt to the doctor a lot of this like claims are built up upon medical evidence so if you guys are dealing with anything for mental health with your guts with your back with your feet and you know that there's something documented from active duty you need to show that that condition is still bugging you a lot of vets get very um, discouraged when they sign up saying, well, I don't really have too much. I only have a bad knee and I have tinnitus. Uh, I don't have anything else from active duty. I don't know if I could claim anything else. That alone, if you have a bad knee and tinnitus, and let's say that vet was from 20 years ago, those conditions have probably manifested other conditions, which can be known as secondaries. So if you have a bad knee from... Uh, 10, 20, 30 years ago, and now you have bad backs and uh, your other bad knee, uh, those conditions can be service connected as secondaries. You don't need active duty uh, records to, to argue that. You need some current treatment showing that those conditions have now manifested as a result of your service connected conditions. And I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit about uh, what um, is possibly needed on top of that, right? Uh, which mm -hmm. is called a nexus, right? So when you're when you're going for a claim, and let's say it's uh, let's just say it's tinnitus, you know, and migraine secondary, right? Because that's what your triggers are. You're gonna need some something uh, that's called a nexus, the connection to your service. Uh, we're able to uh, provide you the referral uh, to Telemedica um, in order for them to look at your documents and uh, provide that nexus if it's if it's there. Right. And that's that connection to service that a medical professional can give you. Um, and that gives you huge weight, huge uh, evidence uh, when you're submitting that claim where it's not just uh, your lay statement or uh, hearsay. Right. As the VA may look at it, 
uh, you actually have that nexus from a, a medical professional. If you have that lack of continuity of care, that's going to make the claim not impossible, but just harder to get. So the sooner that you uh, can respect your body and the hurt that you're going through and get seen by a doctor because of it, the easier it will be to get those conditions recognized. If you have a condition that you've had for a number of years now, and that has resulted in numerous other conditions that you're now living with, then um, definitely sign up and we'll see what your medical records say. It's never too late. Yeah, like popping ibuprofen 800s and Red Bull is not a good substitution for self-care. And I'm, <laughs> I'm saying that from my own experience, uh, yeah. my own guilty experience is thinking ibuprofen 800s and Red Bull would just get me through the day. Please, it's never too late. Um, at least take a look at that discovery call link and, and see if this is a good fit for you, because I would hate for you to just sit there and just say this is good enough uh, when you can definitely um, maybe build from it. And uh, look, we're just saying, let's get you what you deserve, right? That's that's mm -hmm. it. Um, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, whatever um, you deserve by, you know, ethically, morally, legally, we want, we want you to get that. And we're here to help coach you through it. Quality of life will definitely improve. Um, and it just takes you... Uh, admitting to certain things and that certain things are hurting and, you know, getting in there, getting your butt to the doctor. So thank you for spending your time with us today, vets. If you have any other questions, please reach out, use that discovery call link, and we're here to help. Appreciate you guys.